Sunday afternoon. Grace asked me to stop over and visit her husband who had been in a coma. She wasn't expecting him to recover. So I went from church, went to the hospital. I'd actually not met George before. And as I was standing over him in his coma and was silently praying, all of a sudden, George opened his eyes. And he said, oh, Jesus, I must be dead. (laughs) I'd never been greeted like that before. (laughs) And I said to him, George, number one, I'm Pastor Delsing. Number two, no, you're not dead. You're very much alive. Why in the world? Did you greet me like that? And he said, because I told my wife 20 years ago, the last time I went to church, that the next time I went is when I was dead. And I said, well, I am happy to announce to you, you are not dead, but you are very much alive. Today, as we enter into the gospel text, a gospel text where Jesus meets uh, Philip and Nathaniel in a culture in which People have an understanding that church is about place. It's about a place where we go to church or we go to meetings at church rather than anything else. We want to begin by raising that whole purpose. George said the next time I go to church is when I'm being laid out in a pine box. And I thank God that you're here today and that I'm speaking to the living, because you have ears to hear, minds to understand, and hopefully will, to be obedient to what we sense in God's word as we wrestle again meeting Jesus for the first time. Four brief words. Nothing that you haven't heard before, but that first word is this. The church is not a place. The church is a people. Always has been, always will be. The Greek word for church is ekklesia. At the center of ekklesia is the laity. In fact, when the word church was being used, or ekklesia, it meant the gathering of the laity. When the people of God come together in Christ's name, we are being church. So say to your neighbor, we are the church. Yeah, you sound convinced to me. (laughs) Because as long as we continue to hold to the idea that we go to church, and that it's when we're in this place, then I am confident when you leave this place, you do not believe that I am the church, that you individually are the church out in the world. But that is very clearly the biblical understanding. When it's talking about being a follower of Jesus, it's not being a follower of Jesus what we do so much in this hour. In this hour, yes, we gather around the word, we gather at the table, we sing together, we're we're a gathered community. But what's significant for the world's sake in a biblical understanding is how you are the church when you are out in the world. And that's what I want us to press into. That second word pertains to the fact that when Jesus came, that he came announcing that the kingdom of God had begun to come. Jesus wasn't the kingdom of God, but he came to proclaim the kingdom of God. That's what he did when he saw Philip and Nathanael. He announced to them that the kingdom of God had come. Nathaniel had an interesting response. Well, what in the world good thing could possibly come out of Nazareth, your hometown? Huh? So I want to say to you, what in the world good thing could ever happen from folk from the parks? Huh? Loves Park. Those of you who are from Roscoe and Rockton. Those of you who are from Polo and Pecatonica. Those of you from Winnebago and Rockford, what in the world good thing could happen here? You better be convinced that wherever God comes together and wherever God scatters his people, good things happen. Jesus came to announce the inbreaking, the coming of the kingdom of God and that the kingdom of God was contained in his fulfillment of Scripture. In our first hymn that we sang and talked about, 
the whole lesson that Jesus spoke in Luke chapter 4, that the prison doors will be opened, the oppressed will be set free, that the blind will see, that the deaf will hear, that the lame will walk again. And in the book of Acts, we see the early church doing that very thing. God still does powerful things, but at its core is this, that God changes lives. We come to understand our purpose. So the kingdom of God has come in the person of Christ. Now, I don't want you to be confused. The church is not the same as the kingdom of God. We are the people of God that gathers together as believers in Christ. But I also believe that God continues to need to do the work of conversion in our midst to change our lives, to change our way of thinking. For some of us, like George, to open our ears and our eyes to see that God loves me for who I am. That God accepts me for who I am. That God forgives me for the mistakes in my life. And he comes to give us new life. Because until we are convinced that God changes lives, we don't have anything to announce, do we? How can we announce the kingdom of God if we ourselves don't believe that God's kingdom matters? You see, the good news in my mind is this. When Jesus said the kingdom of God is coming, which is greater than any other kingdom, he said it's greater than the Roman Empire. It's greater than the United States, friends. And it's not about the United States that we pledge our great allegiance as Christians. Our allegiance is found in Jesus Christ. As for governors and presidents and Senate and Congress, they pass away. But the kingdom of God exists forever. The United States has done some great stuff in the world, but it's also done some evil stuff in the world. The kingdom of God is greater than any country of the world because it's about God's rule. Not about Caesar. Not about presidents. Not about emperors. God comes to claim you as the people because God loves you. So that second word is that God wants to bring change into our life. Life change, life perspective. As Psalm 139 said, even before there was a twinkle in your father's eye, thinking about conceiving you, if your father ever had that kind of foresight, to be able to believe he knew that this is when you were being conceived. God loved you and knew you. That God knit you together in your mother's womb. That before the foundation of the world, Psalm 139 says, God knew about you. That is a word the world is hungering for. A purpose that goes beyond retirement. A purpose that goes beyond work and success. Even a purpose that goes beyond family. To say that ultimately, the author and creator and architect of the universe cares about you. That's significance. That's significance, friends. Out of all the millions and billions of people that have walked in the face of the earth, God planned for your existence. And his son, Jesus Christ, has come to extend the love of God to you. You see, when we see that and understand that, that then God has a purpose for us, we do have a message to bring about the kingdom of God.